the power to heal your broken heart It's the power Yeah, God is power So don't hold back, no, don't hold still Cause God is here and He is real Take four steps to the left, to the left One, two, three, four Turn it around and move to the right One, two, three Now take tiny little jumps forward to the front One, two, three, four Four jumps back but you better look Everybody clap your hands. Now stop. I feel it in the air right now. It's all around, I see it everywhere. It's the power. Yeah, yeah, God's power. It's the power to move and it starts. It's the power to heal your broken heart. It's the power. Yeah, God's power So don't hold back, no, don't hold still God is here and He is real Take four steps to the left, to the left One, two, three, four Turn it around and move to the right One, two, three Now take tiny little jumps forward to the front Well, hello there, children of the most great, wonderful, living, true God. God loves us today, and it's so good to be back with you again. And I am just believing God and receiving that God is going to allow us to be back together in person real soon. I'm so happy to be here with you, and we're going to open up in prayer. Father God, we come thanking you so much for another blessed day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you that you sit high and you look low and you are mindful of us and you love us, Father God. We thank you for all the children. We thank you for those that are reviewing these recordings, Father God. We pray, Father, that you are using each and every teacher, Lord, that we are, Lord, edifying, that we are, Lord, giving your word in truth and in power and in demonstration and dominion. And we thank you on today, Father God, for being a hearer and an answer of our prayers. Bless the children and all those that are watching. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. So today we are reviewing lesson nine, and I am doing part three, which is sanctify and anointing. And our power verse today is, you shall anoint them, consecrate them, and sanctify them that they may minister to me as high priest. Okay, so today we're talking about when Aaron anointed Moses. When Moses anointed Aaron, I'm sorry, when Moses anointed Aaron, and it was God that told him to anoint him. And God wanted him to anoint him so that he would do a special work for God. And we know that Moses and Aaron were the ones that led the children of Israel out of Egypt. We know that God used them to do mighty, mighty things with the children of Israel in the wilderness. And so God told Moses to sanctify Aaron. 
Now, this is different from consecrating because when someone is sanctified, it means they have been made holy. And we're not talking about the holy like we see in a colander or anything or when we see people with holes in their shirts. I know when we were growing up, I had a sister. She just refused to, you know, want to switch over to the new pajamas because she loved the one that had the big holes in them. They were comfortable for her. So it, my mother had a hard time getting her out of them. But that's not the holy we're talking about like you see here on the colander, right? We're talking about being holy, set aside, right? Consecrated, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. So when we say that we have been made holy, we're in essence saying that we have been bought by the blood of the lamb, which is Jesus Christ. And when Jesus went to the cross and died on the cross for us, and we in turn received him as our Lord and Savior, then we were made holy. Right then and there, we were made holy. We were cleansed from all unrighteousness. We were cleansed from all sin and made holy. So God told Aaron, to wash his hands. And this is sort of a hands-on lesson. And unfortunately, we're not able to be together where we could have had some demonstration with some of you young people washing your hands. And so God told Aaron to wash his hands, which is the cleansing process, right? Because we want our hands to be clean. We want to be able to lift up holy hands before God, cleansed hands, pure hands, okay? And so God told Aaron to wash his hands. And when Aaron washed himself before entering the holies of holy, it was a symbol of a type and shadow of our hearts and our spirits being washed from the sins as a result of Jesus dying on the cross for us, amen? So. Not only was he told to wash his hand, but he was also instructed to wear the white linen robe. And if you see here on our slide, we see the washing of the hand. We see the, the white robe um, that the priest wore represented being made holy and clean. Because white represents holiness and it represents the cleanness, right? And so we see that there and so as children of God and being bought by the blood of Jesus, which is our lamb, we were sanctified the moment Jesus forgave us of our sins. And the Holy Spirit moved into our hearts at that time. And at the time that we received Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we were washed by his blood. And we were sanctified right then and there. So we must live our lives now that we have received Jesus as our Lord and Savior. We've been washed by the blood. We've been cleansed. We have to live our lives according to that. So that means what? That means, Sister Danielle, we can't just listen to any kind of music. We can't just look at any kind of movie. We can't have conversations with people that are not lining up with our lifestyle now that we've received Jesus, right? So before where it was okay to do certain things, now it's not because I have given my life, I have given my heart, I have given my mind, spirit, and soul to God. So that means that I want to be consecrated for him. I want to be set aside for him and to do the things that he desires of me to do. I don't want to be connected to the world anymore. I want to be connected to the kingdom of God and his goodness and his blessings and his holiness. So I can't just do the same things that I was doing before I made a decision to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Because we have to protect our hearts from the negativity. We have to protect our hearts from the evil that the enemy puts out here in the world, right? We want to protect our hearts from that because we want to live in the blessings of the Lord. We don't want to live in the curse, so we don't want to um, engage in things that are not lined up with the blessing of the Lord. And there's a lot of movies, there's a lot of programs, there's a lot of news, there's a lot of media, there's a lot of social um, 
activity online that just doesn't line up with God. And so in my household, those things are not allowed. The media is not allowed in my house, amen. The news is not allowed in my house if we're not trying to get the weather report because those things doesn't edify us. They don't build us up. They don't feed our spiritual uh, person. They don't feed the God in us. They don't help us. They don't they don't benefit us or any of that. So we have to be real careful what we allow in our eyes, what we allow in our ears, and what we say out of our mouth. Because what we say out of our mouth especially is what we're going to get. So you don't want to say, oh, I feel bad. Oh, I don't like her. Or, oh, I don't want to. No, we don't want to do that. We want to speak the things that we want. I know a minister, he says all the time, stop saying what you don't want and getting what you don't want. Say what you want and get what you want. And that makes a lot of sense. And I thank God for that. And so that's something that I try to practice in my own life, right? So Moses anoints Aaron. And it must have been really amazing to see this because when someone is anointed, that means that they are being prepared to begin to do a great work for the Lord, right? So we see here, we see where we have the oil, we have the oil, and Psalms 133, 2 tells us that it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. So when that oil was poured on him, he was made anointed, and he was anointed all over so that he can do a work for the Lord. And so it is the same with us. And then we have Aaron being anointed by Moses. On our next slide, we see in Leviticus 8, 12, and it says, and he poured of the anointing oil upon Aaron's head and anointed him and sanctified him. And Aaron at that time was being anointed to do a great work for God. And again, as we know, him and Moses were the ones that God used mightily to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt, amen? Praise God. This is, I, I, I thank God for his goodness. I thank him for Jesus. I thank him that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore because the same things that applied then applies to us today. And it's not a hard footprint to follow. Amen. So when God anointed Aaron, he equipped him to do what God had called him to do. And so let's just use for an example the army, right, which is what our lesson gave us. Our lesson gave us the army, and that's a good example because when you join the army, you are sent to boot camp, right? They send you to boot camp first, and boot camp is to train you and to teach you how to be a soldier. And so they will give you all kinds of different equipment that you're going to need when you're out on the battlefield. And we show that here. I have a, a picture of that, a picture of the suit that they give you. And, and that's, the, that's the most amazing thing. When you go in, they strip you of everything that you bring. You don't use any of your own items. You don't use any of your own money. You don't use anything that belongs to you. They give you everything. And so it is, that is a symbol of the same thing God does for us. He gives us everything we need. He equips us with everything that we need to do the job he has called us to do. And you might say, well, Sister Danielle, I'm only eight, I'm only 10, I'm only, but God can still use you. And guess what? He is gonna use you. If you've opened up your heart to him and you've asked him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, you better get ready because he is going to use you. And so here we see that we have the army suit. We have the, they give you the boots. They give them the rifles. They give them the grenade, the knives, and they give them all the equipment that they need to go to war if they have to go to war. But they train them on how to be soldiers first and foremost. And so it's the same way again that God does for us, right? God chose us to do a job for him. He chose us to do a job for him. And your job may be different from mine, but they both have value. They both have um, something that someone needs, right? So you may have a classmate, you may have a neighbor, you may even have a friend, and it may even be a family member close to you that you can help, that you can do something for. I remember one of the students sharing about 
the girl in her class being bullied and she befriended the little girl. And I can relate to that because I know that happened to me when I was in school, when I was young and in school being bullied and how the young lady befriended me and how much better I felt having that one friend made me feel stronger. It made me feel like I wanted to go to school, like I was okay, I was gonna be okay. And so I don't know what God may be calling you to do. He may be calling you to maybe buy someone lunch at school or share your lunch or he may be calling you to buy someone a gift with your little allowance you get or whatever but whatever it is that God calls you to do know this he have equipped you with what you need to get the job done no matter what it is he never leaves us out there alone without he'll never do that so if he called you to do it and you say yes Oh, you better look for a glorious good time because the Lord is going to bless. So God trains us. He gives us the tools. He gives us the skills. He gives us the coping, the coping skills that we need. He gives us everything we need to do a job that he has called us to do. And sometimes we may feel like we're completely unable to do the job. But if we step out in faith, and we do it anyway, or we may feel like we're going to be rejected from somebody, but we go ahead and do it anyway, that's when God gets the glory, and that's when God is able to manifest his word and his love and his life in you and those that you're helping. So you're not too young. Matter of fact, you're at the perfect age because you're watching this video, which means you're understanding, which means that you are being edified, which means that God is revealing some things to you. So God can use you and he is going to use you. So whom God calls, he equips and who he equips does an excellent job for him. So we just thank God that God himself anoints us and he equips us for his service. Amen, isn't that a blessing? That is awesome, that is awesome. It excites me, it excites me. I love doing things for the Lord because I see the joy that it brings to other people. I see how other people are able to come to him. You helping someone else will enable them to say, you know what, I want the same God you have. I want to serve God like you do because you're always doing things for people. You're always helping people. I want to do that. I want to be like that. And I see how much joy you have in your life. I see how happy you are all the time. I see how much peace you have. And so that is what God desires for us. Amen. And so that's basically the lesson for today is God has consecrated us. God has anointed us, God has sanctified us, and it's all to do a work for him. Nevertheless, we can only do the work for him if we have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So at this moment, if you're watching and you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I want to give you that opportunity right now. So just raise your hand with me and say, Father God, I thank you for your goodness. Lord, I am a sinner. I have never received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I ask that you come into my heart, Jesus. Live your life in me and through me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior today. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all it takes. Amen. Praise God. So get ready to be used by God because just then you were made sanctified and holy. And so now he is going to equip you to do a job for him. So get ready, get excited, and be blessed. God bless you. Super.